Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about one of the most used anti-malaria drug known as chloroquine. Let me write that here. Okay. So this drug was first discovered in 1943 and it has been used in widespread and in helping humanity against malaria. So let's. T I'm going to talk about what is the mechanism action of mechanism of action of the chloroquine and how it can treat the people with malaria. So the first thing I want you to, to take point here is that the chloroquine is a very weak base. So what it means, weak base, weak base means when it is in the inside the acidic environment, it can easily protonate, right? Protonates. So protonation, pro. What does it mean? It means it can easily gain a hydrogen ion, right? It, so it can easily gain a hydrogen in acidic environment. We know in the acidic environment the pH is pretty low. It means the concentration of hydrogen ion is pretty high. So now let me introduce this basic idea. Now let me go draw a typical um, cell that is infected with malaria. Right? So. Again, this is your cell. We know that malaria is um, infects. It essentially infects a red blood cell, right? So it, if it goes inside a red blood cell, so imagine this one is our red blood cell, and the parasite actually goes into our red blood cell. So this red thing is parasite, and we know. They can't just survive for nothing. They need the nutrition, nutrition. The parasite needs the nutrition to grow and, rep and be able to replicate and do its um, life cycle. So what it does is that it hijacks our hemoglobin, hemoglobin that is, that is present in our red blood cell, and it takes it to its very important part of the parasite known as what? Digestive vacuole. Okay, so this is our digestive vacuole. Di Digestive vacuole. So let me just this just make it. So this is a red blood cell, and the red thing here is our what? Um, um, parasite. Yeah. Okay. So we have red blood cell, red blood cell, parasite, and digestive vacuole. Okay, so this is digestive vacuole inside the parasite. It's smaller, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to make it larger because all of the essential um, mechanism occurs inside this digestive vacuole. So imagine this is our like hemoglobin. This is our red blood cell, and this is our hemoglobin here. Okay, hemoglobin. So it goes inside the digestive vacuole. So when it's here, hemo. Globin. It'll get converted to the heme. Okay, so why it does convert it to the heme? Because as it does that, as the parasite does that, it creates a very nice um, side product known as peptide bonds. Right? Peptide. We know peptide are the protein, right? More peptide there is more protein. So they break the peptide to the amino acids. And they will use this amino acid to be able to grow and to be able to survive. Now, so this is the cycle they usually do. So now there is a problem here. Heme is a very soluble thing, right? And it is pretty toxic on itself, right? So the parasites need to find a way to be able to get rid of the heme because it's pretty toxic. And if it is accumulates, they're gonna die, right? So what they do is they do a farther step, very crucial step, they co they convert the heme to the hemozoin, hemozoin, yeah, hemozoin, so what is hemozoin? Hemozoin is non-toxic, insoluble crystal, inside what? Inside the parasite, so it is like non-toxic, right, so it's like a crystal thingy, and this is pretty non-toxic, and this, with that, they can survive, it's perfectly fine and they can easily survive um, because there is no longer hemis present, hemozone is present. So 
this is a typical thing, right? On the process too. So now let me get into more thingy here. So pH pH here is around five. Pretty acidic. Um in the parasite outside the digestive vacuole it is 7.3, something like that. Inside the red blood cell it is around 7.5. So this is basic, I mean this is natural, natural, pretty acidic. So this process will only occur if the digestive vacuole is acidic. So it means there is a pretty high concentration of hydrogen ion inside the digestive vacuole. So this means the parasite has to have a pump. So there is a pump here that pumps the hydrogen ion from here to there. Okay. But notice that this is against the concentration gradient because there is a lower hydrogen ion inside this one inside the parasite because it's higher, it's more basic but there is, there is less here and there is more here so it means it has to go against its concentration gradient so for this process to mediate it's going to use an ATP to convert it to the ADP plus PI to maintain the acidity inside the digestive vacuole this is very important okay so the hydrogen ion will be pumped inside here um, to get it more acidic and for it to do that because it's going against the concentration gradient it's going to use ATP so I'm going to make it pretty quick so this is the thing so why do we care about CQ what is the role of CQ here so let me write the CQ here so CQ in its neutral form this is neutral right? so this is pretty neutral okay there is no charge on anything this is pretty neutral if you can see okay so this is pretty neutral and we know the membrane of the red blood cell is made of what? Bio it's from lipid, right? Every, every living cell, the membrane is bilayer lipid. So this means that since it's natural, it can easily cross the membrane because it's not polar, so it can easily go in with no problem. And here, no problem either. And again, it can easily go inside of the digestive vacuole because it's not polar. So, now it is inside our digestive vacuole. Okay, we have we have it because it's neutral, and it can easily cross the um, um, membrane. So this is our membrane, right? So this is the membranes. Okay, so it can easily fuse in. While it is there, we call it is very weak base, and here is a pretty acidic environment. So what it means is that it can protonate. Recall from my first point. That it can easily protonate. What it means is it can easily gain in hydrogen. It has two nitrogen. This structure, if you can Google it up, it has two nitrogen that can easily protonate up and gain in hydrogen. So it becomes C Q plus to C Q two plus. Okay. Now, while it is C Q two plus, we know it's pretty polar, right? And polar molecules cannot diffuse out whatsoever. They cannot diffuse out the membrane because membrane is from lipids and lipids are against polar. Polar cannot diffuse inside the lipids. Okay? So it can easily essentially traps inside the digestive vacuum. So this phenomena is known as weak base trapping. Weak base trapping. Okay? Weak base trapping. So we have it, we have plenty of CQ2 plus now. Um, build up inside the digestive vacuole, okay? Now, why is this so important? Because what they do is that they stop, they stop the process of conversion of heme to hemozoan. So recall heme is a pretty toxic material. So now, no longer hemozoan is being produced, so heme concentration would increase up very rapidly. So it becomes many more toxic. Not only that, CQ2 plus can bind with heme to form a CQ2 heme complex, right? CQ2 heme. Okay, CQ2 heme complex. It's a very important thing. Now, along with the CQ2 heme, CQ2 heme complex and the heme itself, they, after the same thing, accumulate. So by same metabol metabolism of the parasite, they're still getting amino acids, but we are building up a lot of this and
Chronic of this, it accumulates in an extent that makes it pretty toxic and cell would eventually lysis, explode and eventually would die off. Okay, so this is pretty in a nutshell what the mechanism is. I'm not going to talk about um, the resistance of the parasites because it's a very major issue and one of the reasons we no longer use this drug is because the resistance of the parasite to this is being found frequently. Okay, I'm going to talk about the mechanism the um, parasites do to against the CQ2 plus to become resistant in the future videos. But for now, I just want you to um, appreciate the phenomena and the mechanism they use um, in order to um, defeat the um, malaria parasite. So I hope you guys find this video very beneficial. Thank you for watching.